GM, everybody, another episode of Wake and Shake. Um, this time, starts. That's that's always welcome to see. Uh, eager to kind of see what everybody's got going on this week. Uh, the reminder: the show is not financial advice, as always. It's also an open forum, so feel free to jump in if there's a topic that we're discussing that you're interested in, or if you want to ask some questions or bring up something else. Love to hear from everybody. But uh, me and Jake are going to kick things off, uh, just talking about some macro and stuff like usual. Uh, so yeah, let's 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 figure out what's going on this week. Jake, GM brother, how are you doing? How was your weekend? Yeah, GM, GM. Uh, weekend was great. Did some um, did a lot of stuff around the house. Um, was able to get some golf in. Beautiful weather here right now, so no complaints whatsoever. Happy um, happy Canada Day to all you Canadians out there. Happy Canada oh, Day, Jim. Shit. I just I just realized uh, mm-hmm. that was a, that was today. <laughs> when I saw someone say something about it, uh, we got a little Independence Week going on. I didn't realize Canada Day and and Fourth of July were so close together. Let's go. Um, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, man, we can get into it. Uh, from market stand up standpoint, Bitcoin up three point six percent on the week right now. I'm looking at. Ethereum up 6% on the week. Solana up almost 18% on the week um, after the ETF filing that we saw, a surprise ETF filing last week. Um, so that's great. Great to see the market green. Um, kind of an interesting uh, zone here, I'd say. Again, I'm not any type of a macro expert. I don't claim to be. I just follow people who are a lot smarter than me uh, and hopefully take some uh insight from them uh one of the main person i reference a lot is don uh he has a really good show called technical analysis on youtube um and also has some tweets that they go over different macro thoughts too here's one that i'm showing right now um talking about how we almost closed the week above support here um so we're looking at Basically, TLDR is that we're looking cautiously optimistic right now. The level that we're kind of looking for um, that he has in this tweet is basically closing above like 64 and a half or about 64 or 70, 65K uh, for Bitcoin to really start being uh, bullish again. And then conversely, you know, the other level would be closing below 60K and it looks pretty bearish. So. But at least the range seems a little smaller uh, than the normal, like 60K to 72K or 58K to 72K. Um, it's kind of like 60K to 65K right now. And, and anything above is like pretty damn bullish. And anything below is pretty bearish. <laughs> so we'll kind of just see what happens. Uh, we're at around 63 right now as we're talking. Um, you know, hopefully we can keep the rally going. Um, and alts in general have been really good. Um, so that's great to see if we can get a nice little, we can get Bitcoin up to above 65 K. We can get a little alts, um, season. That'd be a ton of fun. Cause we've had, um, I know I have quite a bit of alt bags right now after these farms, uh, from, you know, pirate and blast. I'm sure other people do too. You know, ZK dropped recently, you know, layer zero, uh, which has been pumping a lot actually. Um, and obviously a bunch of these other meme coins and such, um, would be really great to see some alt action in the market. But yeah, that's kind of the general sense I'm getting right now. Um, there are some people more bullish than Donald that I follow as well. Um, which is great to see OGD farmer, um, who I'm sure a lot of, you know, cause he's a big NFT trader as well. Um, ape, but he basically said he called bottom being in, um, I think last week sometime, um, for local bottom. So, um, that's great to see too. Um, he's a really sharp trader as well. So yeah, there, there's some good signs better than last week for sure. Uh, where we were at, um, definitely not out of the woods yet. Still, um, kind of in who knows zone and it's, a. Uh, it's a weird week too, given that you know we have Fourth of July, so markets are closed on Thursday, and then we also, you know, I'm sure everyone's taking the day off on Friday as well, since might as well make it a long weekend if Fourth of July is Thursday. So it might be a slower week, but then also we have reports of you know ETH ETF might be this week as well. Um, so it could be a lot of action, could just be like dead. I don't really know. Um, 
That should be should be interesting re- week regardless, but that's what I got at the moment. Um, right now for Macro, I'll pause there. Any thoughts on the Solana ETF? Is that a thing? Yeah. Um, yeah, so the Solana ETF was filed last week by Van Eck was the first one to file it, and they've been very like crypto forward um financial institution they have a pudgy penguin as their profile picture on twitter um if that gives you any indication um i think they they have a intern as well that shit posts a lot so not a su- huge surprise that they were the first ones um to file this etf um they're a bit of a smaller etf issuer so it is um it was a surprise in general that the sole ETF got filed. Um, I, I listened to a little bit of analysis on this and usually like the ETF playbook is about like a year or two of futures trading before to kind of get a sense of demand for that asset before an ETF gets filed. That's what happened with Bitcoin and ETH. And ETH. Um, they had futures before they had these ETFs be filed but there was there hasn't been any sole futures before this um so they're kind of skipping a, a a step in the process that uh the sec likes to see um so a lot of what the analysts are saying is like this there's really only a chance of this etf getting approved under a new administration um so this in a sense you know trump Basically, um, if he wins, then that's the only shot of this ETF getting approved um, or at least any time soon. There's a very low chance that it, it gets approved in 2024. Um, you can see like on poly market, you can actually bet on it, but there's like 11 percent chance right now in the betting market on poly market that it w- would be approved in 2024. Um, so. I wouldn't I wouldn't like get your hopes up of of anything like that. I say like something that would be very bullish is if a bigger um you know a bigger ETF issuer like BlackRock for sure. Um if they filed for sole ETF, that would be pretty big news. Um and that would that would certainly help um the approval chances and and timeline as well. Um so if that happened, I'm sure so would would pump off that announcement for sure as well. Um, but there was, Venek wasn't the only one. There was one other one I saw. I honestly don't remember what the name was. It was, it seemed like another smaller ETF issuer that also filed for one. And maybe this kind of puts a bit of pressure on BlackRock to do it. I don't know. They're pretty big, so they might not care. Um, but yeah, that's, that's generally, um, I guess the analysis that I've heard so far all around the, the sole ETF stuff. Awesome. Yeah, appreciate the the context there. But yeah, any any you guys have anything else? Anyone have anything they want to chime in here regarding uh, macro, soul, ETH, Bitcoin? Do you want me to try and do a TLDR of my recent uh, market recap? Hell yeah, I would love that. All right. Um, yeah, pretty much on the same page as you. Like half the people I follow say bottoms in and maybe are actively long. Others are saying maybe one last little kind of wick scam wick down to <laughs> kick people out. But um, overall, um, I try to post like pretty non-biased stuff. But if you look at seasonality, I'll try and uh, share it in voice hangout chat. The like monthly returns for Bitcoin. Um, we've never had a red July after a red June in the history of Bitcoin, which is pretty bullish. And um, July on average is 8% return. I just dropped it in voicing a chat. Um, so you got that kind of number one, I guess. Number two, the charts, obviously, we're kind of near the range lows, which people typically look for longs. Um, you don't want to short near the lows, obviously. So lower time frames, you've got bullish market structure shifts making higher highs, higher lows. So we need to obviously see that continue, but definitely looking better than we were with the fallen knife <laughs> a week ago. Um, and then the ETH ETF, I guess, just real quick update on that. So the SEC sent back another uh, round of amendment requests to uh, all the filers and requested a response back by the 8th. So we're definitely not going to get it this week. And it, it said there was going to be an additional round after that. So I think it's looking like more like the end of July, but early August, potentially. So 
could still have like that speculation kind of, you know, excitement leading up to it. And then we're almost definitely going to get like a little sell the news um, <laughs> sell off, but um, it's probably not going to go live at least until like end of July at this point, based on kind of what they've been saying. Awesome. I hadn't heard, I hadn't seen that um, latest update. Yeah, I'll, from the SEC. I'll try and drop that in the VC too. Yeah. Do you have any, um, do you have any takes on like price action of, of ETH kind of leading into ETF or, or maybe once it goes live? Um, it's definitely like showing signs of outperformance. Um, like if you look at the, I, I kind of shared comparisons of the Bitcoin and ETH charts and Bitcoin tagged like its daily range low and ETH kind of, I guess, got front ran like it didn't dip as hard as Bitcoin, um, which is obviously a relatively relative strength, I guess. Um, it's kind of key level that I'm watching is 3520 which is both like the daily range midpoint and like this four hour range low, if it can flip above that level, I think that's kind of the key level we need to see ETH uh, take out. But both of them looking this morning have flipped above their local like downtrend lines. So um, at least we didn't get rejected down like off of those. Um, But yeah, kind of similar to others, like it's, it's looking good, but need to see a little bit more, um, kind of before the only like you know the dollar is kind of moving up a little bit today but it's not you know the strongest correlation so overall yeah looking you know optimistic but yeah i need to see a little bit further upside before we totally get bullish i think love to hear it hopefully we can get an eth pump i'm sure that would help uh a lot of alts as well yeah it hasn't uh (laughs) been able to clear the the ETH BTC chart's been trying to break out of this descending channel for a while, but it's still kind of playing around with it. So we got to see what what shakes out this week. What's uh? How long has it been in that channel? Um, since September 2022. Oh wow! Okay, so that'd yeah. be pretty notable. Yeah. It's had a few like fake outs, but hasn't been able to like actually close out of it since. Awesome, man. I appreciate the analysis. For um, sure. Yeah, thank you, bro. Yeah, anything else on, on either Mac or ETF stuff? Oh, we can keep moving. Uh, Teach, did you have anything uh, pressing you wanted to, you want to address or talk about at all? Not really, man. Yeah, no, I don't uh, don't have too much going on. Just uh, kind of enjoying the 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 quiet while we have it, you know. All right, all right. Um, yeah, I have. Um, I kind of have a thesis right now that I I've talked about it a little bit in chat, um, but I kind of wanted to lay it out there. It's um, it's it's definitely like a high risk, high reward type thing. I don't know if it's, it's probably not a play for everyone. And there's also like different plays you can kind of make off of this. Um, but essentially it has to do around the Democratic nominee um, and Biden potentially stepping down. Um, I want to I want to preface preface like this whole thing, political talk with the fact that like I'm purely looking at this not from like a personal opinion view. And I d- definitely don't want discussion to go into that. Um, but more so like, I'm just, I'm just solely looking at this from like, how can we make money off of it? Um, and that's the perspective that I'm looking at. So um, again, don't want to, don't want to like deviate into any type of personal opinion stuff here. Purely, you know, facts and speculation around how we can make money from this. But basically after the, the, the debate performance of, um, You know, Biden versus Trump, he got pretty um, he's been getting rocked in the polls so far. He's gone down um, from approval ratings uh, pretty much across the board Um, and like and also in the betting markets uh, for his chance to win. Um, There's been some pretty there's been a lot of um, chatter about how Democrats, Democratic leaders um, kind of behind the scenes have been, you know, advocating for him to step down um because they because if he they think he's gonna get smoked and if he gets smoked then like all the other democrats um have a worse chance at getting reelected as well so 
Um, there's a lot of clamoring, it seems, behind the scenes uh, for him to step down. Um, really, he's the only one that can make that decision uh, at this moment. Um, so it's not like a for sure. It's not like a for sure thing by any means. Um, but right now, um, I think the betting markets have it as about like a 40 percent chance um, based on. Here, let me link this combined betting market right here and i i like to reference betting markets um over anything else because people are putting money where their mouth is um and not just like an analyst right um and a lot of times um if a betting market is liquid enough um if there's there's a lot if there's enough money coming through then that's that's usually how you can kind of get the best prediction um on what an outcome is going to be um, so here's a uh, here's this thing from real 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 clear polling dot com, uh, which is kind of like the number one thing that pops up when you Google it, and it kind of just takes an average of uh, five of the biggest betting markets for this specific um, thing, which is Democratic presidential nomination, and has Biden at about a fifty nine point four percent chance to be the nominee right now. Um, I just think it's super notable uh, that after the debate, CNN was going on, who is normally like a, a very like left leaning, like Democrat leaning um, publication, like right after the debate, like their entire panel was basically saying how bad of a job that Biden did and like and like bringing up how Democrats were talking in the background um, of how bad he was and like how he probably should step down. And there's been a lot of calls for it. So. Um, there's also like the thesis that Democrats kind of rolled him out early. This is like the earliest. Um, sorry, I am I'm making a point. I am coming to a play. Sorry, I'm just trying to set it up here. Uh, so bear with me. But um, basically, the, there's like the, this thesis um, as well. This theory that the Democrats, leading Democrats, kind of behind the scenes are, but Biden out here on purpose. They knew he was going to do bad, um, just so they could make sure. Um, that like the world could see it and that they could convince him to step down because um, previously he has, he has not wanted to step down. Um, so anyway, all this is saying that I think right now, like there's a there's a play here for these alternate candidates. Um, and their meme coins specifically, uh, funny enough. Um, but. Basically, the front runners right now, if you look at this this poll data that I or this betting odds data that I shared is Gavin Newsom uh, and Kamala Harris are kind of like neck and neck right now uh, for the top. And then Michelle Obama is a little bit behind and, and then Gretch, Gretchen Whitmer is kind of the fourth. And then there's a pretty big drop off um, across betting data and polls. Uh, so it's kind of like those main four, really those main three between Newsom, Obama and Harris. Um, and I think right now their coins, if if one of them uh, were to get selected as the nominee, like I think the risk return right now is um, is pretty excellent. Like if you, you can get like a come out the, the main Kamala Harris coin for it's right now, it's about three point. I'm looking at it, it's three point six million market cap. Um, the main like Gavin Newsom coin right now is three point also three point six market cap. Um, the main Michelle Obama wants 12 million. So that's not as good risk return. But um, that's kind of looking in the context of of how well the Bowdoin coin did, which Bowdoin all time high is 750 million. So that would be literally like a, a 200 X from where these coins are right now. Um, again, not saying that they're going to get to where the Bowdoin all time high is, but I'm saying that's like that's kind of the potential that these plays have. If one of them were to, which I, or if one of them were to um, take office, um, and if Biden were to step down, um, that's like, if it is like a one in two hundred potential, that's like, um, you know, the bet that that's that's way better than what you could get um, if you were to just purely take a bet on one of them to win the nomination. So that's kind of what I'm looking at right now. I'm going to stop there um, to to get some takes from you guys on this, but I think um, I'll, I'll, I'm also going to do a field report where I can kind of give out specific 
coined as well that I like um, because there is certainly plenty of risk here. I mean, risk that Biden doesn't step down, right? And then, um, like, none of this works out. And then also risk that you pick the, that you pick the wrong coin. Um, so that's why I say it's very high risk, high reward play. Um, but I think um, in general, like, really, for any of these to to pay off, I think again, just purely my opinion, but I think just we you just need Biden to step down. You don't even have to pick the right person. Because um, there's going to be a period of time from when he steps down to when a new candidate is elected, where there's going to be plenty of speculation on who that candidate's going to be. And I think all these alt coins across the board will pump um, if Biden steps down. Um, and we kind of have like a timeline between now and the Democratic um, the Democratic National Convention, where they officially pick the Democratic nominee which is going to be um august 19th to the 22nd um so there's a bit of time i think really between here and now is when the time when biden would step down if he if he doesn't by then then he's probably for sure not stepping down um so you could play like that you also could play it um a more safe route and just wait for to see if he does step down if he does, then try and find a coin from there. Like you already know kind of the playbook. You already know kind of what coins look at. And hopefully you can be quick to the news um, and catch it where it when it before it doesn't pump too much on you. Um, and maybe you can have a play there. But um, different ways to play this, in my opinion, that's just as kind of my thesis right now. I really like the risk return on these coins. And I personally have played it where I just kind of took bets on a few of these different candidates and coins. Uh, in different areas um, to kind of hedge myself. I didn't go all in on a certain one, but kind of spread out the basket a little bit um, as I kind of think I have I have more conviction as well, I guess a little bit more than the betting market that Biden will step down. I just don't think he has much of a chance now after that debate, but it's also unlikely that a, an incumbent president um, will step down and not um, go for another re-election that's that like is has very very rarely happened um i honestly don't know the last time it has i haven't looked that up so that's why the odds are what they are um but yeah that's my spiel um i'll pause there for any thoughts from you guys it's for sure man yeah, yeah interesting opportunity what you got jenzo i was just gonna say regardless of what angle you choose i think political memes and just coins in general are going to be like a, a front runner for the next few months. So, you know, there's a lot of opportunity there and keep an eye on it, regardless of what your like political views are or whatever. You know what I mean? There's a lot of opportunity coming. We see it like even during the debate, we saw all the crazy coins popping up. Of course, 99.999% were rugs, but there are opportunities there for people. So, yeah, definitely pay attention to that sector right now. I'd say if, if you are like, looking at this as a potential play I, I would say the things that i'm looking at when choosing like a coin for a specific candidate because there are mar multiple coins for all these candidates for you know kamala and, and newsom and michelle obama um is like how long it's been around i think people usually like to uh go with the ones that have the most or that were like created the earliest um as well as volume um traded um, as long as it's not like wash traded as well as um, Twitter presence as well, like how active the Twitter is and if they're funny, if they have good memes, um, stuff like that. Yeah. And there's not, there's not only coins too. There's rooms you could look at. There's a lot of different plays now, right? We don't have only one angle of attack. We have multiples. So regardless of what chain you're on, there's going to be something for you. If you look close enough. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think you can go on, like three different chains, Soul Ethan, probably Runes. I'm not as familiar with the Rune game, but um, personally, I've been playing it on the Soul side of things just because that's where the majority of shitcoin activity has been. So I feel like that's where people will gravitate first, and as well as like well, where normies would gravitate first as well. Um, so that's where my focus has been. But I, I certainly think you could play it on on the other chains as well and be just fine. We we've, we've seen it with like the Trump coins. Um, there's Trump coins going off on like all chains, right. That have reached pretty big market caps. So I don't think there's, um, I don't think you can pick 
I think I think there's going to be winners, I guess, on all chains if if this thesis does play out. Question for you, Jake. Are you looking at the Trump trading card collections at all? Um, I, I don't really know anything that's going on with them. It's just kind of an interesting concept that, you know, presidential former president and presidential candidate has official NFT collections. Uh, pretty bizarre. But any thoughts there? <laughs> I honestly completely forgot about his trading cards. Um, I think they might be all right. It's not how I would play it. I think I would rather do the coin side of things because it's more liquid. Um, and the trading cards, like he's shown that he'll just he can he'll just release more of them. Um, so I don't know. You could always inflate the supply as well. So there's kind of more risk from that sense. Um, so it's not my favorite play. No. Yeah, uh, I don't. Uh, I also yeah. don't think it's terrible. My my thoughts exactly, man. I just especially with the supply, he just keeps dropping more collections. Bro is out here wilding. Had to ask though, because it is interesting. Oh, man. Anyone, any more thoughts? Anyone think it's stupid? <laughs> it, I realize it's very high risk. Um, but I like to I like to DJ in a bit. Um, I think it could be very high reward, too, if you if you if you play it right. Off dog with a signed Donald Trump NFT if anyone needs one. Yeah, I pre- I'm, I'm struggling to not make a politically charged little quip. But um, I just I appreciate you bringing this up. I mean, I saw the clips, some of the clips, the highlights from the the debate, you know, talking about golf and shit. Uh, but I just did, you know, the collective sigh of disbelief uh, and kept it moving. But I wasn't thinking about market opportunities with that. So, yeah, it's a, it's a good shout, man. Good, good place to have your head at right now. For sure. Yeah, I think I think even if you don't want to make a play, I don't I also don't think it's like a in too time sensitive a thing. I think you could always just like watch. Um, and maybe look, look for dip opportunities. Cause again, it's still like a month and a half until that democratic, um, uh, committee or whatever, um, democratic presidential nomination committee or whatever convention. Um, so, but also like, I don't know, I don't know when, you know, Biden would, would drop out of the race as well in that time. It could be like at any time, uh, within that window. Um, but if you want to just kind of like watch and see if you can find a better um, a better price than where they are now, um, I think that's probably a smart way to play it too. Um, I don't think it's insanely um, time sensitive at the moment. Good shout, good shout. Any other thoughts? Anybody want to jump in, weigh in on the political shitcoin fear? All righty, sounds good. Jake, you got anything else for us this week? Any other topics or anything? I've got one. Um, that was my main thing. <laughs> that was my main thing. We also have DOP dropping this week. I think it gets officially listed on the 4th of July. Oh, dear God. DOP, deliver us, please. I saw somebody ask. Finally, I saw there's a lot of DOP investors. Yeah. DOP capitalized at the perfect time in the market where everyone was just fiending in for pre-sales. Um, right. We are raising we're, it we're, money. Yeah, we are all DOP investors, bro. Every one of us. I saw somebody ask yeah. that once it gets listed, will it be tradable? And I was fucking weak just because that that just perfectly encapsulates uh, the DOP journey until this point. Um, shout out one shot. He, he shared this in the DOP um, thread earlier today, but I'm posting the the current um, tokenomics around it right now. And it looks like from what I calculated, it seemed like around 35% uh, is going to be unlocked in TGE, which is which is certainly high uh, for a token launch, like really high, actually. Um, so hopefully they paid uh, paid up well for some market makers, you know, to keep the price up. But um, I am not super optimistic. I'm not going to lie as as someone who also invested in, in the DOP, I'm I'm really not optimistic on this price action. I believe I calculated it as I think you need to have um, from the presale price where I think a lot of a lot of people got in at, at six cents. Um, I think that was like the second to last presale, and then it went then like I think eight cents was the last one. 
if I remember correctly. But at six cents, um, we would need a 1.4 million FDV um, in order to break even. Um, and about a 500 million market cap with that 35% circulating supply, which would be a higher market cap than what Blast is right now. Um, so that's a little dissuading. Um, but yeah, well, that's my, um, that's my analysis. Appreciate it. Yeah, I'm going to, I'll pray to the dot gods that it opens at 5 billion and, and the 35% is we get our initials back on unlock. That's what's going to happen. You heard it here, oh. folks. Fingers crossed. Any other doppers out there? Dop Daddy? Daddy's awfully quiet. <laughs> I have I one the, little. They're all hold, oh. they're all holding their breath. <laughs> <laughs> Ready for that next uh, next presale announcement? Just kidding. Just kidding. I did have one just minor little like update uh, just from what I was speaking about last week. So last week I was up here and uh, just rode the nuts of uh, the beacon for like 15 minutes. And then a few hours after Wake and Jake, they announced the most nonsensical um, mint and mint price. It was like a 10K collection at 0.115 ETH. Uh, they're basically trying to raise just under 4 million uh, for their token. It was bad, man. It was like pitchforks. It was like insane. People were, were like, are you drunk? Like, yeah, there's no way. But uh Fast forward, they they did it. A lot happened between last week and Jake and this one. But yeah, they announced the price. They had their sale. They raised their four million. It's above mint somehow, um, barely. But uh, yeah, it was yeah, it was a roller coaster of emotions. I thought they were uh, blowing their own brains out. I thought it was uh, market suicide to try and drop a ten k collection at point one one five. But tokenomics were were solid enough, and they had enough hype from their whitelist that they minted it out, which. Still surprises me. But anyway, I just wanted to share that. Uh, I, I couldn't believe it. that I was talking so good about them. And then hours later, they dropped this like insane announcement with that mint price. And everyone was like, what the fuck? It's like, no, what have I done? But uh, somehow, some way, they weathered the storm and came out the other side. But yeah, just yeah, I thought they were there. crazy too when I saw that. But what does that NFT even give? Like, uh, I know I added it. Like, I, I saw it and I was like, point one one five or whatever it was. That's crazy for this market. And yeah, yo, they sold out. But what is it? What does it give you? Yeah, so it's essentially it's a it's just an airdrop receipt. Uh, when their token drops in December, they're given eighteen percent of it to that collection. Uh, so reversing the math out, that they, this was basically a token presale at a twenty million dollar valuation, uh, which people were happy with. So everyone that bought, everyone that minted one of those at point one one five, basically bought in the token at twenty million. Well, that's not too bad. The, yeah, the issue is not. The issue was that when they dropped the announcement of the mint price, they had not announced that 18% of the token yet. So no one knew how much token we were getting, like what the valuation was, like circling, no, no tokenomics whatsoever. They just announced a really high mint price. And everyone was like, what the fuck? So it was mostly just optics and like market sentiment. And like I, I piled on, I pulled my pitchfork out, polished it up. I was talking shit just because it didn't make any sense. But uh, once they gave some more details, People flip bullish and uh, minted it out. Just crazy. I thought it was interesting. It's just a lot can happen in a week. I went from talking them up to hours later being like, these guys are idiots to the disbelief of seeing it mint out in like under five minutes. It was pretty wild. Um, yeah. And here I am still kind of just in disbelief. But hey, man, they did the thing. Do you see how far we've come where as soon as someone announced an NFT now, everybody like gets all nervous? Like, you know what I mean? It's a collection that everybody respects. Well, not everybody, but whoever's in it respects. And they announce this and everybody's like, oh, shit, it's an NFT. Like, Or it's like, oh, you know what I mean? They're all like, is it worth it? Is it? Yeah, totally, man. Yeah, big stigma with especially 10K collections. People are like, what is this, 2022 or 21? Like, what the hell? Uh, yeah, it's hard, hard out there. Plus just the amount they wanted to raise, like you want to raise 4 million in this market. Like it's pretty, pretty lofty goal there, but they were, they said they wanted, they have no VCs, no KOLs, nothing like that. They want to do all community. But anyway, yeah, talked long enough about that. I just thought it was interesting, uh, you know, in this market climate. Yeah, that's surprising. I was certainly not expecting that. Speaking of, <laughs> speaking of, uh nft sales uh this one did not go this one was also funded but did not go uh the way of, of beacon uh saku had its 
yellow eggs sale. Um, I know a lot of us are um, invested in Saku monsters, either through the round or just through eggs in general. Um, but they try to sell 28 uh, thousand eggs, I think, pretty, uh, I think pretty um, entirely. I guess the community was like, "Hey, this is a bad idea," and they still did it uh, at the same price point as the original blue eggs. And there's still uh, quite a bit of supply on the market. I think over five thousand eggs are still available to be bought. Um, so. I'm not sure what the plan is. I don't know if they are planning on releasing any type of like bullish thing to to get the rest of these eggs to sell. Um, but not the best look from Saku. I actually don't have the floor in front of me right now. I'm not sure what it's at at the moment, but I'm assuming it's under mint price. It is. It is at 0.21 Solana. So yeah, like 30 bucks, uh, 40 bucks to mint. Uh, right? Is it 40? Is it? Yeah. What is 40? It? 40 bucks. Yeah. For the gyms, okay, yeah. So forty bucks to mint. I don't know why anyone would pay thirty bucks for a common. Uh, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So, yeah, I think yeah, community spotted. Uh, sh- community spotted it rather. Shout out to the people in here as well in the Saku thread that kind of pointed it out. Like, hey, this is probably not good. Uh, yeah, I saw they dropped an announcement saying this is the last time they're gonna sell eggs through the shop, and that in the future, eggs will come from their token. But I don't know if that's necessarily the bullish thing people wanted to hear either. It's like, sorry that we're inflating the supply. We promise we'll inflate the supply in other ways going forward. I mean, we kind of all knew that, you know, the total number of monsters that were going to exist and stuff. But uh, I don't think we thought that they would do it like this, especially this early with no new in-game utility. Like, there's no reason to stake them or lock them or really do anything yet. So why do we need more? Uh, I saw people say that it was for Android because they did release like the Android app. But uh, the ultimate irony is that you couldn't even access the store from Android. I tried a lot and uh, couldn't do it. I had to do it from the computer. So uh, just goofy, goofy all around. Uh, I, I, I agree with very weird decision that they made. Um, yeah, it's, it's very bizarre. It's like, do they need money or like, why? Why sell another 20K token or 20K eggs? Very bizarre. Well, I think it was always the plan. They never like they they've always said they were going to do two sales. I understand that people just just now caught yeah. on to that, but they were always planning on doing this. It's just they didn't they didn't um they didn't analyze their market well enough because yeah, sure the first eggs sold out and that might have thrown them off and thought oh we're going to sell these out fast and people are dying to get our eggs. But first of all, people stopped playing because they might have hatched their eggs way too quick already. So most people had one egg or zero eggs, so that might have turned off a lot of people right off the bat where, oh, I can't even play this game because I didn't get an egg. So, you know, I'm just going to put it down. They might not even be active. And and um, also, there was just such a big like gap between the first sale and the second that even I wasn't playing anymore. What do you want me to do? I'm not getting any points for playing that mini game. so why would I even look at my phone, right? And I mean, I had a lot of eggs. So, yeah, I mean, I don't think they executed well enough. And um, they also didn't analyze their market well enough for the sale. I don't think it would have ever had success. 40,000 is crazy. I think we all know that. Um, Even if they did it early enough, I don't like maybe they would have sold the 40K, but the floor wouldn't have been great. I don't think it's just nuts to have 40K. Um, But it is the last sale they're doing before TGE. The thing is, they're going to have to alter their plan for the next uh, few eggs because they're supposed to have like, 150 different monsters and so far what do we have it's going to be um i forget i think it's going to be 50 now or uh, is it 50 or 100 with the with the evolutions so there's there's more that's supposed to be coming so is it going to be through breeding you know what i mean also they're taking like they did two basically they're considered like pre-sales in a way because their main game isn't even out yet they haven't shown much of it they only showed one screenshot so you know what I mean? They're it's hard, man. Like you, you can knock them, and I do. Like I think this was a big mistake, but it's we all know how hard it is to build in NFTs when you're trying to collect funds before actually putting a, a workable product out there, and that's kind of what they're doing. They're they're giving people a bad taste in their mouths, and they're not like growing in the right ways. And yeah, I mean, it's gonna be, it's gonna be. Uh, yeah, everything's going to depend on that game. We know how that turns out. Nobody likes the game. Nobody plays the shit. Everything goes to shit. So, 
We'll see. Yeah, totally. Yeah, well said, man. I mean, the same reason that I fudded the beacon is the same reason that I'll fud Saku now. It, and it, like, it has a lot to do with market dynamics and stuff, but also just like the temperature of your project, man. Like, you, I don't care if your plan was to drop two sales. Like, plans fucking change. You know what I mean? Like, the first sale went so well because it's the the first thing, right? Like, it's the you need these to play the the quote unquote game. You know, we can use the word game very generously here. Uh, but since then, they've 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 done nothing. They added like one mini game, the little whacking thing, but they're still just mini games, right? It's like there's no no game really. It's kind of just just a daily check in type deal. So I don't know. They needed they needed to pull more levers. They should have been able to recognize just like the sentiment uh, it, within their project and like sort of just everyone's attitude. Because as soon as they announced this, everyone's just like, oh, cool, mass extraction, got it. Like <laughs> you guys haven't done anything, you know? Like we we had we already bought these eggs, and all they've done is earn these tokens that you still haven't launched. So just bizarre. It's bizarre timing to to do another sale. All they would have needed to do is line it up with an in-game utility, right? Like, oh, put your eggs in this daycare to stake them or some shit like that. It really doesn't matter. They just needed something. It's like, it's all about those optics. You know, you're just going to piss people off. You're going to dump the floor. Uh, it's just, uh, it's a mis- miscalculation in my opinion, but like an obvious one. It's like no one in the meetings like checked anybody, you know, like, hey, maybe this isn't, <laughs> this isn't a great idea, but they, yeah, they just ran with it. And, uh, the market is responding. Yeah, like how many people are actually playing for that leaderboard and will keep will keep uh, buying eggs to like stay active. I know I am, but I uh, will not buy eggs, but I mean, yeah, buy eggs, I guess, and hatch eggs. But maybe 100 people are trying to trying to stay, you know, up there to get as much token as possible. Some of those are might might even be changing their minds because they see that, you know, the team is maybe less competent than they thought. I mean, you're 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 sending out twenty thousand new eggs, but how many people actually want to buy multiples, right? Uh, I don't know. It's they're they're in a tough spot, I think. And um, how many completionists are there really? Too like I'm I'm I don't know. Like if it's gonna cost you thousands of dollars to get all the all the the monsters, are you really gonna want them? It's how many people are actually willing to do that? You know? Right. Totally. Oh, yeah, they're cute. They're not that cute. Yeah. Here's hoping they. Uh... They start listening a little bit more to the community. Not great. Most definitely. We'll always be here to remind them. Well, uh, um, shit. I was going to say, that's all I got, uh, Jake. Unless there's anything else you want to close us out on? Yeah, that's all I had my docket as well. Um, anything else you guys wanted to chat through? We didn't bring up or forgot about? Yeah, it looks like NFTs are getting volume back across the board on every chain. I mean, like I'm seeing uh, Ordinals pump. I'm seeing a lot of the ETH NFTs have volume. Um, uh, Soul, you have Mad Lads that came back up to like 100 Soul. Someone swapped like a million dollars worth of them. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's nice to see. I don't know if it's going to last long, but we're seeing volume across the board uh, whether it be to coins like meme coins or whatever, or um, even NFTs. I, I don't think I've seen a pump across the board on NFTs like I did this last week, which is, I guess, bullish. We'll see. We'll see what the future brings. Dude, really good shout. Uh, when you say across the board, like really, really across the board, one of them that stood out to me, um, if you guys missed it over the past week, there's a bunch of cool catch drama going on right now. Um, I can give you the TLDR, but there's really not a lot of details. Just uh, four, four of like the, the community team uh, announced their last day, uh, like in separate little uh, posts inside of the Discord. So a bunch of people left the team. Um, it's just been radio silent over there. They haven't made an announcement. Um, Klon tweeted just like one image that was really weird. People are like, what the fuck? Like, what's going on? It's been days now. Um, still no update or response over there uh, from the team on what's going on. Uh, just a lot of sadness, a lot of sadness and confusion. Amidst that, uh, the collection's up 30%, uh, just because, like you said, across the board, <laughs> all collections are screen. So that that one stood out to me, seeing them up just kind of in the bucket of, you know, just NFT. It almost seems like just all NFTs are pumping for, for no reason, or not for, not, not for any specific reason within the collections, right? Just everything's pumping. Uh, and this case was eye-opening because, like, obviously the collection is in, like, fucking shambles. Uh, something bad is going like either, either the team just got gutted or they're going a different direction or... I don't know. I don't know what's going on, but uh, the fact that it's pumping despite that seemed odd to me. I guess we do sometimes see, you know, speculators sweep in just hoping there's like a buyout or something like that, but didn't didn't really feel like that. It just kind of felt like everything's green for some reason, no matter what is going on within the project. 
Yeah, it's good to see. I mean, we got um, not the cool cat stuff, but in general, the NFT NFT market getting a little bid. Um, but we got Pudgies up twenty percent. Um, yeah, I guess they also had a big announcement. They announced they um, acquired Frame, which is Saigar, um, the kind of influencer dev who used to be with Azuki and has helped out with some other projects. I think. Um, their L2 that they were building. Um, they acquired Pudgy acquired them to have some type of I don't know, cultural chain. I don't really get the purpose, um, besides having a bigger uh FDV of their token once they launch it. Um that's kind of my view, but uh maybe there's a, a a reason that they're having that they want their own L2. I don't really know. Outside of that aspect of it. Um, there's a million L2s these days. Uh, but yeah, Ape, Ape stuff's up too. Apes are up like 20%. Mutants are up like 27% on the week. Azuki's up not as much, only 12%. Other Deeds up 30%. So, Moonbirds are even up 15%, believe it or not. Um, so yeah, man, it's cool to see. We'll see if it maintains. I feel like we've had bounces in the past and they kind of just bleed out as well, so... We'll see if there's any type of sustainable rally or if it's just another one of those little dead cat bounce action. I'm surprised we haven't talked about Pirate Nation at all. We it feels like we do every week and we just haven't. And uh, up yesterday the pirates were up to one point two above one point two. They came down a bit today, but yeah, I mean the pirates keep pumping. There's just not that many listed. The game's good. You know and I mean, uh, and I think people are realizing that you need founders pirates to get a nice airdrop for their POP token. That's gonna be for the chain. Um yeah, that's cool. I mean, I don't, I don't think we need to get deep into it. We've talked about it a lot, but I think uh, that one every week, people are just more and more looking into it, and it's nice to see that it's steady. Like it's a steady increase in, um, in basically attention. You know, and they, it seems like they've done everything right so far. Real quick, before we put our pirate hats on, I just wanted to highlight that uh, pudgy penguin frame acquisition. I think Saigar is the, the the real winner here, man. It's that's it's the winner of the the week or the month of the year. Jesus, I mean, they didn't even do their airdrop. They never even launched their chain, and they got acquired, man. Like, yeah. what? That's why he's still working it's... there. He's he's still a dev, uh, so they're working together. But yeah, he definitely got a buyout there. You know, I mean, he got paid heavily, and they did mention like I saw them going back and forth on Twitter about why they would do a chain. Obviously it's because the penguins want to capture the fees and everything that come with it, but it's also because they want to have flexibility to quote unquote, do something cool and innovative. Like I didn't really, I don't remember exactly what they said. I could find a tweet uh, if, you, if anybody's interested in seeing exactly what they were talking about, but basically, yeah, they want to have flexibility and range. And um, this was a way for them to do that. Like, we'll see what comes of it. Uh, but they seem, you know, they seem like they want to do something cool with it. Yeah, it makes sense too. I was honestly, I think a lot of people were confused about what the point of frame was even going to be. Like we heard the pitch, we had the AMA, Saigar's very smart and well-spoken and, and has a vision and stuff, but I just didn't really see why anyone would need frame uh, just in general. Like, I don't, I don't know. It's kind of weird. It's like an L2, but like you can, you mint your, you mint your NFTs on frame, but then you just like move them to whatever L1, uh, but they enforce the royalties and stuff. I, it just didn't seem like a big, you know, it's not like a killer app. It's not like a big chain that we're all going to migrate to. It just, it's like the minting chain, right? Uh, so it makes sense in that way that, uh, you know, a bigger, especially like a gamified focused company would acquire them that way. They can, like you said, do cool shit. Like who knows what they'll do, but probably minting in game NFTs, assets, stuff like that. And then being able to, to bridge those around and stuff while maintaining those royalties, like you said. So I think it's a perfect fit for frame. That's why I think that there's such a, a big winner in this situation, because I, I wasn't really sure like what their like market fit was going to be if, if they weren't acquired. Uh, so big ups to them. That, that definitely was a smart move. I found a tweet here. I'll post it in chat. So uh, yeah, are we still getting our frame airdrop or are those going to be pudgy points? Here he's, he's basically replying to somebody, but um, in this, and this whole thread, you can kind of get an idea of why they did it. And he goes back and forth with the red guy that was questioning it all. Like, why the fuck are you guys doing this? But I, I posted the Saigar's response, but um, you can go through it and see. Luke had responded to, I think. 
Ooh, one more shout out while we got everyone's ears here. Um, the MVP vote for June is live. So if you guys want to head up to MBHQ or HQ announcements, and cast your vote for the MVP of June. That would be phenomenal. Great shout. Great shout. Uh, real quick note on, on pirate stuff. They are. If you if you've been playing the game, you've noticed that there's now like login queue. Um, it's like it took me 20 minutes this morning uh, to be able to just log in and play the game. That's because there's they say there's there's a ton of demand right now. There's there's a ton of like there's like five or six K wallets every every day or like new users every day. Playing the game, people are farming heavy um, and the chain is is starting to uh, get get pretty congested. I, I saw that right now, like their main focus is upgrade infrastructure. Um, I believe they said something along the lines of they are going to like have it go on a, a new chain as well. Um, so they have like multi-chain, which is, has always been the plan is that their ecosystem is multi-chain. Um, and I guess I'm sure they they'll both work. I don't, I don't really know the specifics behind that. Um, but uh, right now, I know that they're working on um, and their main focus is upgrading infrastructure to be able to scale. Um, um, and I also did, Scott just had a great update um, saying that Founders Pirates, people who own Founders Pirates will be able to bypass the queue here in the next like 24 hours. I think that's going to go live. Um, so you won't have to worry about the queue pretty soon here if you got a Founders. Thank God, Genius. bro. I had a 45 minute queue yesterday. What a giga brain suggestion. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, man. Anything else? Um you guys want to talk through? We're at the hour mark now. Um, but can definitely stay longer. Yeah, I just saw that Mobland is still a thing and that you can grow digital weed there. I think we should definitely talk about that. Wonder what my token's worth. Holy shit, <laughs> how are they still alive? And who's even like what is this? Like, the longest rug in history? Who knows, man? Amazing. Two months ago. <laughs> Give them some credit, man. There's probably some some ARG work you got to do in there. Got to give people a couple months to figure it out. All right. Well, cool. Yeah, I think that's a. I think this is a good place to go ahead and uh, and stop the show for recording purposes. Um, appreciate everybody rolling through. We'll see you guys next Monday, twelve Eastern.